Hi guys, welcome to my channel Subhasar's classes. Today we are going to conduct a physics class for class 11 and in this in this class we are covering characteristics of wave motion under the title basics of physics. So what are waves, what are the types of waves and what are the types of wave motion in the previous classes we have already discussed them and we know that waves are of two kinds they may be transverse or there may be longitudinal the, in case of transverse wave motion the direction of wave motion and the direction of vibration of particles are perpendicular to each other you have seen this in a sewing machine in the sewing machine sometimes the uh, cotton that is being stitched is going ahead in the horizontal plane and the stitching shoe the the uh, the needle is vibrating like this so this is the vibrating particle and this is the movement of wave and this is transverse wave motion and whenever you have seen whether you are uh, when you see an earthworm moving along the ground it goes like this and this compression and rarefaction is the mode of its motion but in case of a transverse wave motion there are crests the maximum top and the troughs the minimums so in both the directions in the direction upwards you get a crest in the direction downwards you get a trough and crests and troughs make a transverse wave motion and that was the theme of the previous classes today we are going to cover the wave characteristics what are those points which practically determine the characteristics the values or the themes of waves. Waves generally have six to seven things. The first thing is wave motion, uh, the wavelength. What is wavelength? If you take a transverse wave like this, you can see the body is starting to vibrate. So gradually the vibration increases till it reaches a maximum point, then gradually it comes down and it goes the other way till it goes again to the maximum value and again comes to zero so in this the wave again starts going up so here it was in a phase and in the same phase here so the distance between these two points will be this one will be called lambda which is wavelength so wavelength is the distance between two particles having a wave motion and they are vibrating in the same mode same phase so you can also take a smaller wave to study whether the wavelengths can be measured anywhere or at a particular point see these are the crests and these are the troughs so the distance between any two consecutive crests is also lambda or wavelength between two consecutive Drops, it is also lambda the wavelength so wavelength can be measured between any two consecutive particles having the same phase the particles during their drops particles during their crests during their these nodes or these anti nodes the distance between the two is known as lambda which is wavelength this is about wavelength the unit of wavelength is it is measured in meter and so well, dimension will be L which can be written 0 1 0 next we go for amplitude what is amplitude amplitude is the maximum displacement of a particle during wave motion from its mean position if this is the mean position this is the maximum value these value, values are not maximum you see here the, it goes to the maximum value so this value can be called the amplitude so definition of amplitude is it is the maximum displacement from the mean position of a particle oscillating or a wave particle so amplitude is symbolized denoted by the letter a and in wave uh, equations you can find a equation like y is equal to a sin theta 
if you use trigonometry but in physics you write a is y is equal to a sin omega t where this a is the amplitude y is the displacement from mean position and this displacement becomes maximum when this value you know sin theta is maximum when the value is 1 and this occurs when theta is pi by 2 90 degree so at 90 degree y will be a sin 90 degree or a sin pi by 2 which is a into 1 which is equal to a so the maximum value of displacement from mean position occurs somewhere here or somewhere here so these are the positions where the amplitudes are there and y value is maximum the value of y will be maximum so if this is y axis this is x axis or t axis time axis then this value will be the maximum value this value is another maximum value this can be taken as minus a this can be plus a this is zero so these values zero they indicate the nodes and the values plus a or minus a they are called anti nodes and anti nodes actually indicate the position of the amplitude next we go for time period every wave as it oscillates it starts from a point at t is equal to 0 and it goes on reaches the amplitude comes back to the node point or the zero displacement position again goes to the other extreme to the other amplitude and again comes back and in order to reach this state it takes some time also time period t so this is known as the time period so this time is required for the wave to complete one complete oscillation so the time required for the wave particle to st uh, start afresh or for the second time doing the same thing again so from this point to that point there is a time required that time is known as time period so this is time period of oscillation and how to find the values if this point you take a zero then this point this point this point and this point also represent a type of time so here there will be t upon 2 because this is zero and this is t so this point will be t by 2 and this point naturally half of this so this will be t by 4 and this will be 3 t by 4 so this is one fourth this is another one fourth this is the third one fourth this is the fourth one fourth so if you divide the four factors for the whole lambda into four parts then you can see corresponding to these time periods the distance covered here will be lambda by 4 and up to this will be lambda by 2 and up to this will be 3 lambda by 4 and total is lambda or 4 lambda by 4 so see the wavelength is also synchronizing with the time period and what if we talk so this is time period t it is measured in seconds and its uh, dimension will be 0 0 1 next let us go for the next bit frequency you know frequency is the reciprocal of time period generally we call we put, denote it by the letter f but it is actually measured in the greek letter nu nu stands for frequency and this is one upon time period so if t is in seconds your new will be in second inverse which is otherwise known as Hertz according to scientist Hertz this the name is given frequency of frequency the uh, unit of frequency is Hertz 1 Hertz is the same as 1 second inverse so what are the relations how to relate these things see when in the general motion you know that s is equal to vt where s is the distance covered this is the speed this is the time 
सो फॉर व्हाट दिस फॉर ए वेव फॉर ए वेव दिस डिस्टेंस इज लैम्डा द वेवलेंथ एंड दिस वेलोसिटी इज वी एंड दिस इज टाइम पीरियड टी एंड सो वी कैन से वेवलेंथ इज इक्वल टू वेव वेलोसिटी इनटू टाइम पीरियड And as time period is one upon frequency, t is equal to one upon nu, and nu is equal to one upon t. So this value can be put here. So this is also equal to v into one by nu. So this can also be written as velocity, wave velocity upon frequency. सिंस लामडा इज इक्वल टू वेलोसिटी भि डिडेड बै न्यू सो वी कैन से भि इज इक्वल टू लामडा इंटू न्यू सो फ्रम दिस वी कैन फाइंड वेब लेंथ इंटू फ्रिक्वेन्सी इज भेलोसीटी सो भेलोसीटी अफ ए वेब क्या बी गिविन बै दि प्रडक्ट अफ वेब लेंथ एंड फ्रिक्वेन्सी लामडा एंड न्यू सो दिस इज एनादर फर्मूला सो व्हाट आर दि फर्मुलाज वी हाव गट इट फास्ट फर्मूला इफ वी टेक लामडा इज इक्वल टू भेलोसीटी इंटू टाइम पीरियड फास्ट सेकेंड भेलोसीटी इज इक्वल टू लामडा बै टाइम पीरियड थार्ड भेलोसीटी इज इक्वल टू इनटू न्यू सो दीज आर दि थ्री फर्मुले वी गट नाउ वी हाव कवर्ड वेब लेंथ एम्पलीच्यूड टाइम पीरियड फ्रिक्वेन्सी एंड वेब भेलोसीटी वेब भेलोसीटी इज दि इफ दिस इज दि वेब एंड इफ दिस लेंथ इज लामडा एंड इफ दि टाइम टेकन फर कवरिंग दिस इज टी देन भि विल बी लामडा बै टी सो इट इज दि the time taken for the wave to cover this distance so this is wave velocity and next we go for phase and path what are they since the, from this point to that point it is lambda and when we talk of time period this is time period t this can also be measured in terms of angle which is 2 pi if from this to that we can think of a circle whenever the the motion starts the point is here as it go to the first 90 degree here amplitude the zone of amplitude comes after 90 degree here and again after 180 degree it comes to the node back here and again here the th three fourth of the motion is complete here and here complete the motion so these are the points where the amplitudes came and these are the node points these are the anti node points so we can see that this part is covered here and here there is this point can be zero this pen point can be lambda by 2 this can be lambda similarly टाइम वाइज दिस कैन बी जीरो दिस कैन बी टी बै टू दिस कैन बी टी एंड इफ वी टेक इट फेज वाइज सो दिस विल बी जीरो दिस विल बी पाए एंड दिस विल बी टू पाए सो दीज आर दि थ्री डिफरेन्ट मेजरमेंट्स मेजरमेंट बेस्ड ऑन वेब लेंथ मेजरमेंट बेस्ड ऑन टाइम पीरियड मेजरमेंट्स बेस्ड ऑन फेज and this is the wave length this can be also termed as a path so what is if i just draw a line here where am i path wise i am at lambda by 2 lambda by 4 time wise i am at t by 4 and phase wise i am at pi by 2 so these three things are interlinked so if i move just 30 degree that means pi upon 
if I cover this much, this is the phase difference. What will be the corresponding path difference? Since total a path of lambda is related to a phase of 2 pi, so one unit will be 2 pi by lambda. So similarly, if the phase of 2 pi is related to the path of lambda, then unit radian will be related to lambda by 2 pi. So when I take pi by 6 here, I will get pi by 6 into lambda by 2 pi, pi pi cancel. So I get lambda by 12. So here the path difference will be lambda by 12. So this is the calculation which gives us the relation between phase and path difference. For a summarizing this, the phase and path are interrelated. When the total distance, total path is covered, we call lambda is covered. When the total phase is covered, we call 2 pi radian is covered. So, 2 pi, the phase 2 pi is related to the path lambda. So, phase, unit phase corresponds to lambda by 2 pi. So, if you have x as phase, then the path becomes lambda x by 2 pi. Now calculate the reverse way. If path lambda is related to 2 pi, then unit path, say lambda meter is related to 2 pi radian. So 1 meter will be related to correspond to 2 pi by lambda. What will x meter correspond to? This will be 2 pi upon lambda into x. So this will be the phase related to this path. So path and phase, phase and path are interrelated. Somewhere you multiply 2 pi by lambda into the path. It, it gives you, when you multiply 2 pi lambda into the path, you get the phase. And when you multiply lambda upon 2 pi into phase, you get the path and this is all that I wanted to teach you and here the characteristic of wave motion the theme of wave motion is over and let us assume this class resume this class up in the third uh, part and till then please like my video share subscribe and bye thank you